Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 26 of the DeHart House podcast. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Big Spring, Texas, and today is Saturday, December 30th, 2017. This is the last episode for 2017. More to come in 2018. All right. So today is the eve of New Year's Eve. So today is my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, dad. <laughs> um, yeah. <sighs> the year is almost over. Our Christmas celebrations are over. Something is over, as you can see. I'm ripping something out. <laughs> All right, I'll talk about that in a second. So you can find me on social media as, uh, let's see, I have different names in different places. I'm Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry. I am Read Knit Run on Instagram. Um, the podcast is, um, we have the DeHart House podcast group on Ravelry. And then for the shop, we have uh, DeHart House on Instagram. And to find the shop itself, that would be DeHart House Creations on Etsy. Okay, so um, a few introductory things to talk about um, before we get to the actual content. So first of all, I'll talk about what I'm doing. All right. So I am ripping out, not the whole project, but part of it. So I am ripping out the sleeve on a sweater uh, because the sleeve is too big. So as in too wide, not too long, it was too wide. Um, so I need to rip it all the way back because it was way too big for the entire sleeve. So I'm going to rip out everything I knit for the sleeve and start over doing more, um, more decreases. So I figured I'd do that while I'm podcasting. We'll see how that goes. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is what I am wearing. So I am wearing my sweater. So this is my five shades of gray sweater. So the whole thing fades. This is the So Faded pattern by Andrea Mowry, which is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And what you do is pick, you know, five or however many colors you want to fade down the sweater. And it's knit top down. And you can't see because it's black. Maybe a little. There's a little ribbing up here. Yep. And it is um, short row shaped at the top um, so that the neckline at the back is higher than the neckline in the front. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is my five shades of gray sweater. I don't think I've worn this on the podcast for you guys. I know I showed it to you, but I don't think I actually wore it. Okay, it is really blowing that up. Okay, I have a shirt on underneath this, so. But yeah, the lightest color, whew, it is like just really blowing that out. So it's not a uh, cream. It's a cream and gray tonal is the last color. Wow. Okay. Anyway, whatever. But yeah, black down to a really light gray. And I love it. I love wearing this sweater. It was a really nice pattern to follow. Um, the only thing that was difficult about it was knowing where to make the color changes. So, you know, when she was writing the pattern, she was like, do it wherever you want. And it's like, yeah, but where the lines hit you is really important. Um, anyway, that was the only challenging thing about the pattern was um, 
knowing how far to knit before making those color changes. So, but I, I like where mine hit me. So, anyway, I still need to update my project page on this project. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm wearing my sweater and I wore this sweater at Christmas and I just, I just love it. Ooh, I love it. Okay, so um, I'm going to sort of sidetrack here a little bit and tell you guys about Christmas. Um, we went to my sister's house, so my parents and my sister uh, moved here, and so we all live in Texas. And yes, yeah, so we went to my sister's place for Christmas. Um, her son is five, and it was just better to have Christmas at her place so that uh, Wyatt could enjoy his gifts uh, at home and they wouldn't have to, you know, transport all of those things. <laughs> um, anyway, she did a wonderful job hosting. We had great food, great fun, and lots of gifts. So that was great. So, a couple of things <laughs> I want to share with you guys. Uh, first of all, I am originally from Michigan. So I grew up in Michigan, um, went to um, college there, got my undergrad uh, degree, then moved to Montana for my graduate degree, and now I'm in Texas working. So um, growing up in Michigan was great. I totally miss the snow. So here in Texas, it is a cloudy day. It is cold and rainy. Well, I don't know about rainy, but everything is wet. I haven't seen it rain, but everything is wet. And actually, a few days ago, I actually saw icicles hanging from the house. And I quickly took pictures, and I'm really glad I did because like 20 minutes later, they were gone. They had melted because the sun came out and it warmed up and they melted. And that's the closest we've gotten to snow, I'd say. Anyway, so definitely not a white Christmas here. Um, in fact, I feel like there's nothing to do outside because there's no snow. You can't go sledding or build snowmen or have snowball fights or any of those fun winter activities. So, yeah, I'm really sad that, that not everyone gets to enjoy those things. So if you're living in a place with snow enjoy it for me, please. <laughs> Cause I'm really missing it. It's, I mean, I don't like cold weather. Um, but I do miss playing in the snow and I just, I remember going outside and playing in the snow and then coming in and having hot cocoa and watching a movie. And it was the best thing ever. And I would totally do that as an adult. <laughs> I would totally do that if we had snow. So, I don't know. Sometimes it snows here. I've heard. It's happened. It's not like, you know, three feet of snow is going to fall out there. But if it happens, I'm going outside and taking lots of pictures. Anyway. Yeah, so... It is cold. It's a little above freezing. Uh, and at night it is getting either close to freezing or actually below freezing. Uh, so it is cold. We just don't have any of the fun, fun, fluffy white snow to play with. Anyway, I'll stop talking about that. So for those of you who actually live in Michigan or have lived in Michigan or you visited Michigan or whatever. Okay. Do you know what pickled bologna is? It is exactly what it sounds like. It's pickled bologna. You can only get this stuff in Michigan. Can you believe it? I had no idea until I left Michigan that you could only get it there. 
So I graduated from Northern Michigan University in December of 2011. Mm hmm So it's been six years. Yeah, it's been six years. I've been back to visit. We went back to visit once for a funeral. That's right. Anyway, it's been a while. So as a treat for my family, I got everyone pickled bologna because we used to eat this on um, special times like Christmas. It would be one of the meats out on the meat, cheese, and cracker tray, um, pickled bologna. Okay, we have been talking about it like every time we get together with my family, we bring up pickled bologna. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you can't get it here, yada yada. All right, well, I found it online and it did cost a bit to ship it because they have to keep it cold, but as a Christmas gift, it was totally worth it. So I got everyone pickled bologna, at least us Michiganders, we all got pickled bologna because I knew we we liked it. Um, Michael was not a fan. He tried it. He's like, yep, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be, and I don't care for it. So I got the whole ring to myself. <laughs> okay. That was awesome. It was just, it was really nice to have a taste of home. So if you have not tried pickle bologna, it is exactly what it sounds like. Um, and I just, I wouldn't eat it every day. Uh, it's definitely a every once in a while kind of thing for me. But it has been a while. It has been years. So it was okay to indulge in such such things. So yeah, it was a total surprise, even though we had been talking about it. Uh, <laughs> I was like, it was an obvious gift, you guys. We keep bringing it up. <laughs> Next year, I'll give them each a case of Verner's. <laughs> <clears throat> Another Michigan thing. So anyway, that was fun. Another little tidbit about Christmas which sort of leads into next year is that I wore this sweater for Christmas okay now I have been knitting since I was a teenager and I have been crocheting since I was like five alright now I did not crochet very well at five but I was still hooking yarn just going at it so when I was five I told my dad, I'm going to crochet you a sweater, Dad. I'm totally going to crochet you a sweater. So I took the yarn, I took the string of yarn, and I measured his chest with the yarn, right? And this was funny because I remember this. I took out a pen and I put a little tick mark on the yarn to say that's how big around that is. So that's how big the sweater needs to be. Okay. So I took the crochet hook and I crocheted up until I got to that little tick mark. So then of course, you know, that much yarn becomes this big. I'm sure it was a little bigger because that was only the front of me, but anyway, let's say that big. Like maybe a foot, maybe 10 inches. And then of course I couldn't crochet straight lines in the sides, right? If you've tried crocheting, you know that there's some thought to it, unlike knitting, for to get the sides straight. So the thing was just like this wonky, crazy looking triangle thing. All right, there's your sweater, Dad. Yeah, it was hilarious. So I don't know when it was brought back up again, like the first time we had mentioned it, but it has been a long time running joke of me making a sweater for dad. Like, I promised him when I was a child that I would make him one, and I still haven't done it. So then I wear my sweater at Christmas, the thing I made, and he's like, really? Really? Okay, so next Christmas, 
I gotta have a sweater for dad. Or sooner. I could give it to him in the summer or something, but I gotta make him a sweater. It's gotta happen. It was hilarious. It was a really fun Christmas. We had a lot of, you know, inside jokes and memories. Uh, it was great. Anyway, we did not play Euchre, although we should have. We played Dominoes, but we should have played Euchre. I'm totally just talking to the Michiganders here. Okay. Now for everyone else. No. <laughs> Look at this crazy yarn. Okay, I'm insane. I don't even care. We're getting close, guys. Okay, so let's move into actual content now that I've blathered on about nonsense. And I hope you found it entertaining. So I'm going to start with announcements. So, yes, the Canuck Socks Cal is still going on. You have another day or two, okay? The um, Canuck Socks Finished Objects thread in the D Hard House podcast Ravelry group uh, is where you need to post your pictures of your finished socks. Okay, so one post per pair. Okay, I need to stop ripping up. Uh, one post per finished pair of socks. I will randomly choose a winner from the finished objects thread, uh, and the winner will get to choose a bag out of my Etsy shop. It has to be a sock size bag since it's a sock knit along. And the sock size bags are a medium size bag. Okay, so the finished objects thread will close on January 1st. Sometime during the day, I will close it. So make sure you um, get your pictures up as soon as you can if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing your Canuck socks. Um, okay, that's it for announcements. <laughs> Oh, cinnamon tea is so good. Okay, so let's talk about shop update. So, D Hard House Creations on Etsy is my shop. And I have some new bags that I'm working on. And I have some of the fabric to show you. So, I am working on, this is going to be called the camera bag because the design is cameras. Yes. And I have the pieces. I don't have it sewn into a bag yet. I started these this morning and then um, I kind of got distracted by a video game and <laughs> it's Christmas break, you guys. Like, seriously. Okay. It's not a Christmas break for much longer. Michael has to go back to work on the 2nd, which means I'm going to go back to work. Not like full days, but like I got to do some lesson planning so that when the semester starts, I don't feel overwhelmed. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, they're just, they're cameras. And I love that they have the, um, they have this style. They'll look, they've got like the flash, um, the light right and the covers and they even have like oh my god they're different style oh my gosh which where am I pointing this style right here of cam oh my gosh they're so cool I love this print and the clear pocket is gonna get snapped up there but yeah I just think they're super cool okay so that's gonna be the outside and it's going to have the leather it's fake leather, guys. It's not real. Okay? Excuse me. It's it's fake. It's vinyl that looks like leather, but it's not real leather. Okay? Um, yeah, so for the durable bottom of the bag and the clear pocket on, on the outside, the sides will get sewn up, so it'll just be a pocket. Okay? And then the interior is going to be blue. Like this washed blue... It kind of looks like denim, 
But I think it looks so cool with the cameras. Yeah. Okay. So camera bags. So I'm going to have um, sock size and sweater size in the shop. And I'm going to have some Notions pouches made out of the blue as well. So that is what is coming up next for the shop. They're not up yet because, you know, I hadn't even finished the first bag yet. So when I get them finished, I'll take pictures and I'll post the items. I don't really schedule shop updates. Um, it's just whenever I finish the bag, I take pictures and post it. So, um, if you favorite the shop, then you'll get notifications of when I add new items to the shop. Okay. I also post um, pictures on Instagram as well. On the DHeart House account on Instagram, um, I'll post the same pictures I'm putting up on Etsy. I'll post on Instagram to let people know new stuff in the shop. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can get updates of when um, things are going in in the shop. Okay, since I don't have scheduled updates, that might be a thing of the future, but for now, it's just whenever I finish it, I post it. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about for the shop is the coupon code DHEART Podcast 15 expires at the end of the year, you guys, which is in which is tomorrow. Okay. December 31st, the coupon code expires. So um, anything that's up in the shop, you can get 15% off. Um, yeah. So there's only like a day left on that. So if you haven't used it and you want to, you still have a little bit of time left. Okay. So... Let's talk about knitting, shall we? Let's talk about knitting on this knitting podcast. Okay, so I finished a couple things. Like I said, I really, I really wanted to finish as much as I could in 2017 so that I can start 2018 fresh. So. I put my works in progress in bags and line them up on the couch. Look, there are no bags over there. I still have works in progress though. Like the thing I'm ripping out. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the other things are done. Okay. So the first finished object I want to talk about is my shawl. I mean, it's not mine, but but it kind of is. So I finished, um, so this is my, I still have some ends to weave in and I need to take pictures and I need to weigh the yarn, but this is my meandering Malabrigo shawl. And it's finished, it's finished. Okay. So this is the meandering shawl pattern by Stephen West, which is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. So, oh my gosh, I just love the border. All right, so it's a brioche shawl. So it uses brioche style of knitting and um, you use a light color and a dark color and whatever, right? So, <laughs> oh, it looks so cool. All right. So I used, so the dark color uh, is Malabrigo. It's Malabrigo sock and the color is Anniversario. And the light color is Dye is Cast Yarns and the color is Rainbow Storm. 
So the Malabrigo, it's mainly purple, but as you can see, it has like every color in it. It's so pretty. It was so much fun to work with, getting those pops of teal and yellow and pink and just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's really cool. And then the dye is cast yarns. It has this, I mean, it looks gray. If you just glance at it, it's gray, but it's speckled with pink, blue, and yellow. So, it's not going to focus. All right. Anyway, it has those little pops in there, which is really fun. And then look at the border. Look at how this border. Yeah. That is so cool. And then the bind off is crazy. I think it's an I cord bind off or a modified version of an I cord bind off. Anyway, I've never done one of those before. I understand now why you guys complain about it. Um, it's time consuming. It's not difficult. It's just time consuming. And when you have like 500 stitches, yeah, but it looks so good. It is so worth it. Anyway, terrible lighting. Oh, yeah. So I need to, um, Weave in the ends. I need to weigh the yarn. I need to wash this and give it a good, give it a good block. Oh man, it's so cool, you guys. But yeah, it's it's a good size. It's a really good size. I made the small version, so he has two sizes listed in the pattern, and I made the small one because I didn't want to change colors. I wanted all the same color dominant on one side and then all the same color dominant on the other side. So, um, yeah. So I didn't have multiple skeins. I had one skein of each of these colors and I just wanted to use one skein of each and that's it. So I made the smaller size. And I did actually have to skip one one pattern repeat, not a whole pattern. There's a part where he's like, um, now repeat these rows like five more times. Um, and I had to skip one of those uh, because the dark color, I have this much left. I have this much left of that Malabrigo. <laughs> and I weighed it and it's three grams. And I could not have done um, one more of those repeats with three grams. So I cut it as close as I could, you guys. I was literally, <laughs> I had my scale right next to me, uh, when I was working on this. And every time I used the dark color before a row, I'd weigh the ball of yarn, I'd work the row, and then weigh it afterward to see how much yarn I was using for each time across. Um, and then I knew the, the bind off was going to take more yarn and whatnot. So I'm really glad I did that because holy crap. Yeah. It looks so, it looks so cute though. Yeah, it is totally muting that. My lighting sucks. Okay. The other color though, I have a bit more left. I did center pull, can you tell? Yeah, I gotta rewind it. Right now it's just this saggy thing. Let me see, I must go right here. 18. 18 grams left. Yep. 
Alrighty. Yeah, I finished that. So that's a lot of yardage. And I finished, oh, oh yeah, and I knit this on a US size 4 needle, which is what the pattern called for. Uh, US size 4 is a 3.5 millimeter. I used my Chow Goose and I used the circular with a 40 inch cable. And I'm really glad I did because you do get a lot of stitches. So if you're thinking about making this, um, I say the bigger the cable, the better, because there's a lot of stitches. And with brioche, you have all of those extra yo's. So, anyway, um, so for this meandering shawl, uh, like I said, it's brioche knitting. And I was brand new to brioche when I started this. I watched a tutorial video from Craftsy and then immediately started this and it was really easy to follow you guys so if you're a beginner brioche knitter and you're looking for a project this is great um, it is a paid for pattern it is very well explained and easy to follow um, once you get past um, the start of the shawl up here was kind of finicky and I think I had to do that like two or three times but once you get past that you're good the pattern is easy okay so and then after doing all of this um, zigzag meandering in the middle you get enough experience to do the crazy stuff on the border so that's my thing. If one of your, um, you know, knitting horizons, as the bakery bears would say, <laughs> if one of your knitting horizons is to brioche knit something, I would recommend The Meandering Shawl by Stephen West. Okay. So my other finished object is a pair of socks. Let me grab them. Oh, and my sock blockers are over there. Oh, well. So, um, these are my, so I renamed them to something more clever. So these are my, um, Hermione, it's cold outside socks. <laughs> because, uh, the pattern is Hermione's everyday sock and the yarn is Baby, It's Cold Outside by D. Hart House Creations. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. Hermione's Everyday Sock for the pattern. And the yarn is yarn that I dyed for the shop. And I knit these as a sample, but, um, yeah, they're my socks. They're my socks. So I knit these, um, toe up which I'm now loving. I did a Turkish cast on and in the last episode I put a link to the video that I watched for that. Um, so Turkish cast on, I increased up to 60 stitches. So I did less stitches than I usually do. I think my gauge is a lot looser than it used to be. Um, and they fit really well. So I'm only doing 60 stitches. The pattern on the sock is Hermione's Everyday Sock, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. The heel is a Fish Lips Kiss heel, which is a paid for pattern. It's a dollar. Um, and then a one by one rib at the top. And then the, um, oh gosh, what she call it? Lori's bind off, Lori's stretchy bind off, something like that. I also linked that in the show notes for episode 25. I think I, 
I think I might have also linked it on my project page. Can you do that? I don't think I did that. Anyway. It is so cool, you guys. Alright. So the reason I didn't like Toe Up before is because I couldn't find a bind off that I liked. That was stretchy, but not stretchy. <laughs> Because I don't like it when you bind off and the top looks like a mess. It just looks like this frilly, bunched up, like like you've already worn the sock 75 times. Um, and this is so much cleaner for me. So I love it. I love it. And I love the cast on method, so I think this is my new favorite way of knitting socks. Yeah. Oh, and I knit these on a US size 1 which is a 2.25 millimeter and I use my Chowgu needles with the 40 inch cable so I knit these magic loop style I did them one at a time because I hate two at a time anyway yeah so baby it's cold outside is the yarn and that is available in my shop use the code and get 15% off if you order it now in the next five minutes just kidding. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Super cool. All right. So um, I only use 60 grams for these socks. So I have 40 grams left over. Um, and this is hilarious. Okay. I did center pull for the yarn again for the yarn ball. All right. This is insane. Look at what happened to my yarn ball. It's a yarn cone. How the heck does that even happen? Like, okay, so I was pulling from this side. Yep. And somehow it just, I don't understand. <laughs> it just looks weird. What the heck? Okay. I'm just, I don't know. I'm a person who likes to understand how and why things work the way they do, so um, this confuses me. Okay. That's my alarm to tell me to walk Marjorie, but it's too freaking cold outside. I'm not doing it. So we're going to run around the house instead playing like fetch or something. Yeah, I went outside to check the mail, and I was like, not happening. Like I said, there's no snow, so what's the point? All right, so that wraps up finished objects. So um, those are the two things I said I wanted to finish, and I did finish them. Yay! Okay, now, I did not finish everything for the year. I do have some carryover projects. So let's talk about works in progress for a little bit. So first, let me talk about the item that I was just showing you guys. So I think I need to pause on the ripping out here. So this is a sweater not for my dad this is for Michael I need to start one for dad dad and I sat down and we picked out um, a pattern because he did have some features that he wanted so I need to buy the pattern um, and just get ready anyway this is Michael's sweater this is um, the Flax by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, they have Flax, which is the worsted weight pattern, and then Flax Light, which is the fingering weight pattern. And I did knit the, the Flax Light in the baby size. Um, and now I'm knitting Flax for a male adult, which is huge. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, I finished the body, um, and I showed you guys this, like, I don't even know when that was. Anyway, 
and I knit almost this whole sleeve. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I knit almost the whole sleeve, had Michael try it on, and the thing is way too freaking big. So, as you just saw, I ripped out the sleeve, and now what I'm going to do is pick up those stitches again and just decrease more aggressively and hopefully that will fix it. I'll need to take notes so I can replicate it on the other sleeve. And then and then that will be finished. But yeah, I started that this year. I actually really did not, I have not really enjoyed working on this. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that the yarn is worsted weight or that it's acrylic or that there's like no design to this sweater. I mean, there is a design, but like on the body of this sweater, you have color changes to look forward to, but on this one, it's just all stockinette and just boring. And I'm thinking that's what it is. I'm thinking it's that it's, because it, if this had been color work, I think it would have been fun. With worsted weight acrylic, I think it would have been fun. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm knitting this out of uh, Red Heart yarn, and now my thing looks like a dead squid or something. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Red Heart yarn, and the color is Soft Navy. It's 100% acrylic, just from Walmart. Um... I have loads of this <laughs> because the men in my life like blue, all of them, all of them say blue. I want blue. So I have a lot of this. Okay. Um, and I'm knitting this on my Chow Goo Needles US size 5. I can show you because I've been ripping it out anyway. US size 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter, and I don't know how long this cord is, but probably 40 inches. Yeah, I would think so. So I'm going to do the sleeve um, magic loop style. And yeah, so that's a carryover project. All I have to do are sleeves. So that's good. My next carryover project, still a work in progress, is my worsted scrap blanket. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to show this to you. But it is a mitered square blanket. I'm knitting it out of various worsted weight acrylic yarns. So this rainbow container here of yarn. This is all um, my worsted weight acrylic yarn. Well, there are some exceptions because like that's DK weight. At the bottom, I have like the doily cotton thread yarn. Anyway, that is neither here nor there. <laughs> um, yeah, so it started out by using scraps and now it's it's not scraps. I'm like going in and picking out colors. <laughs> Whatever. Um, the pattern uh, is written in on my project page because I the link seems to be broken for the pattern that I was originally using. So I don't know if the designer pulled her pattern or what happened. But I made notes and I wrote it in. So that's what I'm doing. And I think I'm using a US size 7 uh, knitting needle. But I don't know for sure. I've probably used a couple different sizes in this thing and not realized it. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a blanket. So let me just show you um, where I'm at. Oh boy. Is this the best way? Oh my gosh. I 
Okay. So, yeah. You know what this blanket makes me think of? <sighs> Hopefully someone out there understands what I'm about to say. This reminds me of, there's a book about like Elmer the elephant. I think it's Elmer. And he's like pattern, like, makes me think of that. I loved that book. Okay. As a child, it's a, it's a children's book. Anyway, my plan for this blanket, when I started it, and it's still my plan, is to make this into a 20 by 20 blanket. So 20 squares by 20 squares. And it's not even halfway done. In fact, let's see. I think I still, do I have any ends to weave in? I think I have a few. I would have to finish off, so this row right here is the halfway, right? So I would have to finish off these bits um, to have it actually halfway done. So it's not like I'm far from being halfway. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I just haven't felt like working on it. I think because it's so massive. So I made an afghan over the summer with, um, it was a colorwork crochet afghan that I designed. And I think the size of that afghan is actually going to be the size of half of this afghan. So it would be a 20 by 10. And I want to make this 20 by 20. So I want to make this twice as big as the afghan I made over the summer. Last year, that was summer of last year that I made that blanket. That's right in 2016. Anyway, this is an ongoing project and I knew it would be but I'm still kind of frustrated with myself for not being more um, willing to work on it. So that's another thing I want to finish. And then last but not least, another blanket. So all of my carryover projects are huge projects. A sweater and blankets. So where did I put that? Oh, behind me. Okay. So this one lives in a basket and I haven't done anything to it since I showed it to you last time. Uh, this is the TARDIS blanket. So for any of you Doctor Who fans out there, I'm crocheting a blanket to look like a TARDIS. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, I'm finding stitch markers on all kinds of things where I was like trying to keep track of my progress, but since I haven't touched this thing in like forever, scrap that. So the idea with this one is to knit, um, to knit, to crochet the TARDIS itself, and we're doing this bottom up, and then come back in with a neutral color like gray and add on a border. And the size of that border will just depend on how much bigger we want the blanket to be. So. The idea is that it'll be about the same size as my stag afghan, um, so like a single person blanket. So the stag afghan is kind of mine, and then the TARDIS one is kind of Michael's. And then this, the scrappy one, is like for two people, so twice as big. <laughs> anyway, this is that same red heart soft navy blue. Like I said, I have a lot of it, so just need to do this and use it up and clear up so many spaces on that shelf back there. All right, so the pattern for the TARDIS blanket, I've modified 
not on purpose, I accidentally modified by miscounting, uh, the Scrappy Tardis Afghan pattern by Jessica Evans. And she's got a nice chart for the color work. So um, the chart is beautiful, however the squares are tiny. They're so tiny to make that whole thing fit on one page. So I, miscount I miscounted. Yeah, so I modified it, but not on purpose. Like I said, I'm using the same Red Heart yarn, and I'm using the hook size is H, which is a five millimeter. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So these projects are the things that I want to Keep in mind, as I'm like thinking about casting on, I'm thinking of casting on everything because look, my bags are empty, you guys. My bags are empty. And I want to cast on all the things. But, you know, these projects will never get done if I never work on them. And I really want to finish them because I have a big Rubbermaid container filled with projects I've started and haven't finished. And I really, I really don't want to add to that. In fact, I want to go in there, rip out all of those projects I'm never going to finish, I'm not going to use, and find some other use for that yarn. And just put it on the shelves as yarn instead of half crocheted whatevers. Okay? They're, most, they're mostly crochet projects. <sighs> anyway. Okay, so... Now my nose is runny all of a sudden and itchy. Okay, so um, that pretty much wraps up this episode, you guys. I don't really have anything else to talk about. Uh, we've been enjoying our Christmas break from school. Uh, Michael and I work at the college here in town and... Um, yeah, we've been video gaming and, you know, the funny thing is, we've kept our alarm on this whole break. The alarm that wakes us up at five in the morning. Why did we do that? I don't know. Not that we've actually woken up at five. What we'll do is we'll turn the alarm off and go back to bed. I don't know. I think we're afraid that we'll forget to turn it back on. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've been enjoying our break, and there's part of me that's excited to go back to work, but at the same time, I love my schedule. Get up when you feel like it, do some knitting while you drink your coffee, uh, play some video games, take Marjorie for a walk, do a workout, go back to knitting, <laughs> sew a bag or two. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. Um, I've received comments and messages and I really appreciate it you guys. It means a lot to me that that you're watching and this means something to you. Um, I just, I sit here and I talk to my laptop and I'm partially, you know, wondering uh, what the heck, right? Like, what the heck? And sometimes you guys comment and you tell me what the heck. And I love it. I love it. So, um, I really appreciate it. You guys, thank you. Thank you so much, um, for, for pitching in and, and making this community even better. So, uh, I hope you guys have a happy new year after the new year rolls around. I'm going to do a, um, on my next episode, I'm going to do uh, a year in review, so I need to update all of my project pages, <laughs> make sure they're all set to go, and I'm going to look at um, yardage for the year, number of projects, that sort of thing, so that I can sit down and think about 2018. I'm a goal setter, and I like to plan, but at the same time, I like to do what I want when I feel like it, hence not really working on this guy. Um, <laughs> I need to work on this guy. So, um, 
yeah, I'm a math person. I'm a stats person. So I want to look at those things. I find it interesting. Um, and this is the first year that I've actually like entered in yardage. I've never done that before. Well, never. In 2016, I did not do that. So it'll be fun and interesting. Uh, and I'd love to hear what you guys have done for 2017. How much yardage have you knit? How many socks or sweaters? Um, did you knit so many of something? Mini snowmen? Washcloths? I don't know. Um, I would I would love to hear that. So take a look at your project page or journal or however you keep track of your projects. And I think I'm going to have some kind of prompt um, coming up in the Ravelry group. So stay tuned. I'll keep you posted as I iron out the details. <laughs> so have a happy, happy new year. Be safe in your celebrations. And I look forward to seeing you again. Happy knitting! This is the worst thing ever. Picking up stitches. <sighs> These are probably all going to be facing the wrong way. These stitches, by the way. I'm probably going to have to knit them through the back loop because I put them on here the wrong way. I don't care. I'm just so worried about drop stitches. Oh my gosh. Right, thankfully these stitches aren't really going anywhere. You know, they're not like, run for the hills! Okay. Almost there. Oh, that last one. Oh, that last one. Slipping. I'm slipping. <sighs> Got it though. Whew. All right. Do you see how big this sleeve is? Look at that. That is huge. Look. <sighs> yep. All right. So I'm gonna work on this today, you guys, while I'm editing the podcast.